Good merry all Christmas COVID YouTubers, it's Matt here with news of my new all singing, all dancing house power consumption display. So a quick point at this stage of the video, I'm not going to cover the installation of Node Red, Influx DB, Grafana or MQTT. There's loads of YouTube vids out there covering these topics, so you can do all this stuff on a single Raspberry Pi. Um, and if this stuff kind of scares you off, then I would say don't be scared, just jump straight in. Check out Burns HA YouTube channel. We're, uh, which I quite like because he cuts out the annoying stuff and gets straight to the point with a screen record of his installation procedures for most of the programs we're using here. Um, quick note, Influx is now in version 2. I'm still running version 1.8.3. I find the upgrade procedure it looks really annoying, so I can't really be bothered to upgrade for now. Another quick note before we start, I'm going to be careful in this video about my use of the words power and energy. A lot of people unknowingly use these words to mean the same thing, but as engineers we know they have different meanings and you have to remember to not use them interchangeably. Sorry in advance if I slip up here, I'm going to explain a little bit more about how they are different in detail um, later in this video for the uninitiated. Anyway, here you can see two channels of power monitoring, one on the left and one on the right, both showing the same breakdown of data. I have a Shelley EM, which stands for electricity monitor or meter, I'm not sure which, with two current clamps, uh, one 50 amp and one 120 amp. Um, I bought two different ones just so I could compare and contrast. And honestly, I don't know why you would go with the 50 amp a current clamp unless you wanted something that was smaller physically to fit in a box for example um, anyway so I've got two current clamps and we have two different power supplies that I wanted to monitor so I'll go through one of the sides and you can follow um, the rationale behind why I've got these graphs and readings top left we have a gauge which shows current power usage in watts this displays the very latest reading, which is updated every 30 seconds from the Shelly, gets sent from the Shelly by MQTT, and I use Node Red to basically insert this into our Influx DB database. Um, this also gives me the opportunity to do other things with the data in Node Red, such as showing it on the Node Red dashboard or storing it in Node Red memory if I like. Um, so here's an example is my device monitoring system, which I've set up in Node Red, which aggregates all my Tasmota Sonoffs. Shelleys and my own custom Arduinos. Um, this device monitoring system only uses MQTT to collect all the data shown here and it can inform me when one of the endpoints goes down or comes up and I can see its status history to an extent. I can see things like you know Wi-Fi signal, firmware version, even with the Sonoffs um, shows the hardware that it's installed on. Um, this little delete button here allows me to remove it from my monitoring system but um, if it receives an MQTT message on the path that it's listening for, um, then it will just automatically re-add itself back, which is how I want it. Um, anyway, back to Grafana. To the right of that gauge, we've got the green line graph of instantaneous power, which is basically the historical data from that gauge. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, Grafana, we can change the time frame for any dashboard using this pull down in the top right, or we can click and drag on the graph to zoom in on the selected period. And there's also a little zoom out button as well. And we can enter the time period manually if we choose. Um, so now working down from the green line chart to that blue bar graph, uh, you will see the data seems to take a very similar shape to the green chart above, but it is subtly different. Um, you can see the spikes line up um, and the shape is pretty similar. In fact, the data uh, comes from a different measurement within the Shelley EM altogether, um, and it tells us something different to the to what the green chart tells us. Basically, there is nothing clever about the green line chart uh, at all. Um, every 30 seconds, the Shelley sends its current power usage, I should say its instantaneous power usage in watts, um, and I'll just quickly switch to Node Red to show you the um, thing that it's listening for. And we've got this little function here which checks, um, because each message, oh, sorry, each reading from the Shelley comes through as a separate message. So I'm using this function and this join here to put them all into one message uh, so that the output, uh, you know, looks like this. All of the measurements in one payload rather than separate messages. Um, so that's what this function 
um, does. It just checks to make sure that we're listening. Because obviously um, the Shelly, well, not obviously, but the Shelly EM also sends information about the relay state. Uh, I don't, I'm not using the relay and I'm not interested in it. Um, so this function will, you know, basically only return uh, the message if, uh, you know, the fifth element number, it says four here, that's um, zero, one, two, three, and four. If the fifth element in the array that's created by this split operation, um, uh, i.e. the path, um, is, you know, not undefined, i.e. if it exists. Anyway, you can have a look at that in more detail. Um, I'll just whiz through this now. So it kind of combines or joins the multiple messages into one message and that's what we get and then it sends it through to um through to the influx db output node um and then let's just quickly show you the influx database and um, this is what it looks like and you can see at the top these are the readings um so i've got zero energy zero power zero reactive power zero returned energy zero total and uh, zero total returned and zero voltage. Um, the reason it's zero underscore, that comes from this um, node red function. That's me doing the zero underscore. And the zero obviously refers to the first current clamp and the one refers to the second current clamp. Anyway, back to Grafana. This green chart simply plots that data for any time window you select on the dashboard. So you can imagine that if the Wi-Fi dropped out or you rebooted your server, for the duration of that dropout, there will be no data coming into the database, therefore nothing to show in Grafana. And because it's a line graph, it will just draw a straight line between the previous point and the next point in time, be it one minute or 10 days. In fact, um, in Grafana, you can specify whether you want it to draw a line um, or whether you want it to, yeah, so you can interpolate between the previous and the next value. Um, so it'd be a, you know, a line that isn't horizontal or you can have it display nothing. Um, so no, no line at all, that'll be a null value. Um, or you can have it just kind of continue on the previous value for the duration where you had no readings. So imagine if that were actually 10 days drop out um, and in the meantime someone taps into your power supply to boot up their nuclear power station a few doors down and they conveniently shut it down again just before your readings come back then you'd have absolutely no idea on this green graph that you'd been bankrupted um, because it just wouldn't show that spike. Um, on the micro level this can be happening between each 30 second reading um, there can be power fluctuations you know um, and although the green graph shows accurately what the power usage is on those 30 second intervals it doesn't help you accurately work out what it might have been between the intervals. Now, don't forget that you pay for electricity in units and one unit is a kilowatt hour. Don't forget, as I mentioned before, the power is not the same as the energy. That would be like saying distance is the same as speed. They are not. Energy is like the stuff you're pulling out of the power lines and power is basically how hard you're pulling it out or rather how quickly you're pulling it out. So the line on that green graph shows how hard you're pulling the power out and the area under the green graph shows the total amount you pulled out for a given period of time. Um, as, you know, I don't know if you remember maths at school, but that's how graphs work. Um, and the amount that you pulled out for a given period of time is, of course, what the energy company uses to work out how much to charge you for a given month of usage. Problem is the area under that green graph is never going to be an accurate measurement of the amount of energy used. Um, the same way that if you looked at your speedo every five minutes when you're driving through a town centre with roundabouts and traffic lights where you're stopping and starting, uh, this speedo measurement at regular intervals would not be good enough to accu accurately deduce how far you've driven. So Instantaneous power is great, but what the Shelley EM also gives you is a thing called total power, which is the equivalent of your mileometer or the counter built into your electricity meter itself. And this is what you need to know to work out exactly how much money you spent on energy yesterday or over the last six hours or last week or whatever. So this explains the difference between the blue and the green graph. The blue graph uses the total energy measurement from the Shelley, which is like the mileometer. Um, and the Shelley stores this in non-volatile memory like your car does. So it persists across reboots in the same way that your mileometer, you know, doesn't just reset itself the next time you get in it. Um, so in order to show this graph, we need to find the difference between the first reading in the time period and the last reading. 
much like you would look at the difference on your car's mileage at the start and end of the journey. When you have a period of no readings because of a wireless or server outage, the blue graph will show zero for that period because the difference data is grouped by hour. Uh, but the Shelley EM will still be counting energy, uh, so the next reading will jump up. So hopefully you can understand why you'd actually want to see both the green and the blue graph, because they tell you subtly different things. Um, let's look at an example of when I did turn the database server off for an hour or two. Uh, this is on the 27th of December at around 7 o'clock. In fact, um, see on the right blue bar chart, see if you can see... Um, when that happened because uh, it's really easy to spot it on the on the right hand one because the energy usage has been very 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 consistent as you can see um, over the last six seven days um, have you spotted it anyway let's zoom in on this one here the green graph shows a nice smooth line when there are no readings and the blue graph shows this weird zero reading then um, a double reading for the next hour um, because the uh, thing came out just before the end of the following hour so it's you know um, kind of kicked it back into that reading um, now the green graph should probably technically show zero values for when there are no readings and we can actually change this in Grafana um, and you would do this by um, you know this is how you do it you can either show the previous value when there's no values or you can show zero values or you can show null or if you like, you can um, kind of like interpolate between the previous value. Well, it's not really interpolating, is it? Um, but you can go between the previous value and draw a straight line up to the next value. Moving on down to the purple graph, it does the same as the blue graph in that it uses total power, except the data is grouped by 24 hour period instead of hourly. Um, so this gives you the actual amount of energy used per day, which is obviously pretty handy. You could add more graphs for different time periods if you wanted, but um, don't forget you've got the time period selector in the top right. And I only want a breakdown by day or by hour. Can't see of any reason to have any, any other time periods for breakdowns of data than those. Now, under that top left gauge, you will see total for period in red. Again, this uses the total power readings um, from the Shelley, not the instantaneous power. And it works out the difference between the first and the last reading in the selected time window for the dashboard. The number is basically the accumulated value for all the blue bars. And that's because the blue bars are kilowatt hours by hour. So each blue bar is for one hour of stuff. And the height of the blue bar um, refers to how many kilowatts it was. So, yeah, um, if you were to take all those blue bars and add them up end to end, um, that is what that number would equal. Underneath, we've got the orange representation. I have simply set the cost, uh, that's a cost representation. I've simply set the cost to 14p per kilowatt hour, pence that is, um, UK pennies, um, which is not actually correct because I'm pretty sure our power costs more, our energy, I should say, costs more than 14 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, uh, but it's not far off. I think it might be 16 or 17p. Um, and I can't be able to look it up, but it's near enough and it can be changed later. And so for you, if you wanted to do this, you need to look at your electricity bill to determine the cost per unit or cost per kilowatt hour and enter that in to this transform. And here's how it does it. Um, so I am just going to go into here and I'll show you the transform. So what this transform does is it takes your query. Let's just look at that. Um, this is uh, the query of zero total that's the field we're selecting and now if we just scooch over to the Shelley EM MQTT docs you'll see that total which is this one here um, is the total energy in watt hours so it's not actually it doesn't come in in kilowatt hours it comes in in watt hours that's the counter accumulated in devices non-volatile memory so that's in watt hours so uh, we need to convert this to kilowatt hours now I didn't actually have to do that with um, this thing because I just gave it to it in watt hours and I've set the field type as um, watt hours and it just automatically displays it in kilowatt hours if, if the number is big enough. Um, however, for this one, um, I'm actually doing an operation on, on that. So uh, it comes through in watt hours and my operation kind of converts it into kilowatt hours by, you know, multiplying by 0 0.001. And then obviously that last um, one four is there because it's 14 pence per 
kilowatt hour. So that's 0 0.00014 to give you the number of pounds um, for the time period. So that is what that is. Back to the dashboard. So under that, we have averages for hourly and daily use. Again, that's calculated from total power. And you need to be careful with these readings because if you look at the average daily energy, whilst you have a time period selected that is less than a day, then this figure is not going to be correct. It's going to be nonsense. And the same goes for average hourly use. You've got to select at least a couple of hours time window for this number to be meaningful. Right, so that's all the stuff. And same here on the right hand side for my other current clamp sensor. Um, <clears throat> finally, underneath, we show the latest voltage reading from the sensor and the a graph on the right shows the historical readings. Um, now, this graph looks like it's only one reading, um, and not two lines, but that's because the lines are exactly the same because the readings are exactly the same. The voltage, um, we're on a, I think it's the, the same phase of a three phase supply and the voltage is, is bang the same for both of those. Um, and it's also got a handy max, min, average and current reading. And the legend on the right, again, current here does not mean you know, electrical current, amperes, it means the now reading, i.e., you know, the like the current reading right now, not electrical current. Um, you'll notice I used um, pergola power now or pergola watts now rather than calling it current energy as that would be confusing. So I think that probably sums up the whole thing. And yeah, I've waffled quite a lot about um, the graphs, um, but hopefully it's given a bit of insight into you know, how you would look at energy usage. When you actually come to exploring these visualizations, you can start to see trends and patterns. Um, so for example, here, um, we've got uh, on my pergola power supply, we've got a hot tub in there and the hot tub um, has got a big old kick of a couple of kilowatts on and off every couple of hours, uh, but superimposed onto that, um, we've got a an internal electric, like fire electric heater, um, which um, obviously has got a much shorter cycle. So you can see it, um, you can see the hot tub without the electric heater inside, oh, two separate things I'm talking about. You see the hot tub here without the electric heater on and the hot tub with the electric heater on. And you see these kind of like spikes on top of the hot tub, which is quite cool. So you can see, um, so this is what people talk about profiling power usage um, and how um, the electric company, the supply, your electricity supplier um, can sometimes guess what appliances you have and, you know, when you're in and when you're using them based on your usage. And, you know, by the by looking at the shapes of these things, you can really take an educated guess about what it is that you're actually doing in your home, which is pretty scary. That's why I'm personally a bit sceptical about the um, electrical power supplier um, or, you know, your energy provider um, installing one of those smart meters because essentially you, they're reporting much more detailed information. They're not just reporting the counter like your myelometer is. Um, that's the equivalent of your myelometer. They're not just reporting that. They're reporting all this stuff. So they get to see all this stuff if you get a smart meter installed, which is despite being a home automation nut, I don't want that smart meter installed. I'd rather have my own, um, you know, monitoring set up like this. Um, if you've got any questions or anything like that, um, just fire them off at me in the YouTube comments and I'll do my best to answer. Um, but I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching.